Okay, this is just a quick tutorial on how to differentiate a polynomial function from first principles. First principles means we don't get to use our nice little shortcut, we have to use this ugly little formula here. f dash of x, which means the first derivative of f with respect to x, equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And even though this may look pretty horrible, all this is is rise over run. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This x2 minus x1, which cancels down to just h, that's the size of our uh, interval across the x-axis. And we want this to be as small as possible. The smaller it is, the more accurate our result is. And that's why we take the limit as h approaches 0. But the problem is, the closer and closer this h here gets to 0, the bigger this entire thing gets. So we want to get rid of this h. That's our goal here, is to get rid of that h completely. So I'm just going to move this up out of the way and then we're going to come up with just a random polynomial function and we're going to see how we can go about differentiating that. So I'm going to throw into here f of x equals and we'll try 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. This works for any polyno polynomial but this one here shouldn't take too long to do. So the first derivative of this function is the limit as h approaches 0. f of x plus h. So that's 3x plus h squared minus 2x plus h. Remembering to put all the brackets in here. If we don't put the brackets, we are lost. Minus f of x. That just means minus our original function. And again, we have to include the brackets when we're doing this. Now, this next bit, this is a bit that I find the trickiest, and that is drawing our straight line here. Okay, And that straight line is called a vinculum, if there's anybody out there that actually cares about that type of thing. So here we go, the limit of this. Now we're going to expand this bracket out. Uh, this bracket's pretty quick to expand, so I'm just going to multiply 3 into it straight away. So our first term is going to be 3x squared. And then our next term is going to be 6hx, normally that would be 2hx, and then 3h squared, minus 2x, minus 2h, plus 1. Now minus our original function, minus 3x squared, minus negative 2x, so that becomes plus 2x, and then minus 1. And you can see if we didn't include the brackets there, we would have had a minus 2x, and that would have given us a bad answer. Okay, over h. So now what I want to try to do is get some cancellations going. Any term without an x in it, sorry, any term without an h in it is what I want to do so that I can then get rid of this. So I'm going to cancel out. I've got 3x squared minus 3x squared. I've got a minus 2x and a plus 2x. I've got a minus 1. Sorry, I've got a plus 1 and a minus one, so I can cancel all of those. Now every term I've got left has got an h in it, so I can cancel out one of those as well. There's an h there, there's an h there, there's an h there, and there is an h as well. Now this is going to take us very close to our answer, so this equals the limit of 6x plus 3h minus 2. So now to get the answer to this, we just need to ask ourselves, as h approaches 0, what's happening to this 6x term? Well, nothing's happening to it. 6x doesn't care about h, so we can just write down 6x. As this 3, 8, as h approaches 0, what's happening to 3h? Well, it's approaching 0 as well, so we can take get rid of that there. And negative 2, what's happening to that as, x, as h approaches 0? Nothing. Negative 2 does not care about h. So that has actually given us our final answer. The derivative of 3x squared minus 2x plus 1 is 6x minus 2.